Hi, I'm excited to share here one approach to importing the historical stock price series into R. I think there are different ways to do this. My approach here is decidedly inspired by the approach that is illustrated by Jonathan Regestein in his excellent book, Reproducible Finance. So I'll show you my variation and then the source from which I learned his approach. And so to do that, here I'm going to learn, I'm going to load some libraries, including Tidyverse, Tidyquant, and ggplot. Uh, QuantMod is a very popular package for importing uh, the technical data that includes stock price histories. But I've learned that TidyQuant, this is a package written by the super talented Matt Dancho. TidyQuant includes QuantMod, so you get everything in QuantMod plus a lot more. So lately I've just been in uh, loading the uh, TidyQuant. And then what I start here is just with a very modest wrapper function, get my symbols. It just wraps the get symbols. Get symbols is the popular function. It's part of the quant mod used to retrieve the stock price history. So here I could just explicate in my function the, the uh, parameters, including the source. I'm going to use Yahoo. And then here's maybe the most important uh, arguments are the from the two dates, right? Year, month, and day. So I'm going back about seven years in my uh, historical window. And then auto assign, I'm setting to false, uh, auto assign set to true, then would return, the, the get symbols would return as environmental variables. You may want to do that. I don't want to do that in this case per my wrapper function. So get my, so get my symbols, you can see, just basically calls get symbols in the quant mod. And then I just assign here a text vector called tickers that includes the tickers for five of the stocks that for real are in my portfolio. This is a subset of my portfolio, about 30 stocks, Apple, Bank of America, Facebook, Google, and Skyworks. And then my one of my first instincts here was just to use the L apply, popular L apply function in R because that calls the function here for every element in the vector, right? So I'd call get my symbols for Apple, then for Bank of America, then for Facebook. But um, I'm really grooving on the per function, um, the per package, sorry, P-U-R-R-R -R -R package, which includes the map function. And map is similar to L apply, but per includes a lot more than that. So if I say prices adjusted, and I'm going to call map tickers, get my symbols, so you can see syntax is essentially the same and map has here really a data frame or list. So it's an object and then a function, right? That's the basic, the basic arguments of the map. And so it's calling this function for each element in my vector or list. So I'm calling get my symbols with Apple, with Bank of America. I'm calling it five times here. So before I pipe that, let me just take a look at that. Prices adjusted here. If I can, I can zoom in on that in our studio. And what I've created with that map function is a list. And it includes that list has five elements in it because I called get my symbols five times because my vector had the five tickers in it. Each, each element of price uh, adjusted here, you can see has... You can see the uh, is an XTS uh, time series object. So that's a matrix, but it's uh, indexed by timestamp. And you can see here I've got 1,780 columns. That would appear to be once per each day in my historical window. And I also, I'm sorry, 1,780 rows, one row for each daily observation. And I've also got six columns. Why is that? I just thought I was getting historical prices. Well, let me go back here and say prices adjusted. And can I take a look at the first element of my uh, five element list and maybe just the header. And let's see what I'm getting. Um, I am getting here is the one row per each day, but here's my six columns. One, two, three, four, five, six. My dates here are the index. This is an XTX object as part of the list. And I'm getting open, high, low, close, volume, and adjusted for the day. So this is the so-called OHLC 
format. And so that's nice, a lot of information, but I only want the adjusted price. And so conveniently, I, XTS gives me actually a function I can use called AD that retrieves the adjusted price. If I wanted to close, the function is CL. And now, so super conveniently, I can just pipe another map function. And again, that syntax with map is we have that data object and then the function that we want to call on each element in that list or vector. But I'm piping the five element list already, so I don't need to specify it. I just need the function. And the function is super simple. It's just add that will retrieve for me the adjusted price. It's the only prices I want. So I run that. And now my price adjusted. Notice this is similar. Uh, still have a list of five. Each element in that list is an XTS object, but notice my six column went to one. Now I only have the adjusted price because that's really all I want. And then, so then the final thing is, I don't really like this list anymore, this list of five XTS objects. So I'm going to call, uh, I'm going to reduce it. This is inspired by Jonathan Regenstein's, uh, Regenstein's uh, method, merge XTS. We'll reduce this for me. And now if I go take a look at price adjusted, super cool. It's not a list anymore. It's now a single XTS object. Each row is one day. And each column, you notice, is associated with the adjusted price for my ticker. And I don't really like these dot adjusted. So I am going to just assign price adjusted the uh, tickers as the names. So that's a little cleaner. That's my data. That's that's daily price data. So I'm going to do two things additionally to it. This also from Jonathan Regestein's uh, Reproducible Finance, these two steps, right? I'm, I'm uh, going to take my daily prices and convert them to monthly. So price monthly. And I'm going to use the two monthly function. Pass it the price adjusted. And it has an index at argument because I'm going from daily periodicity to monthly periodicity. And so do I want to use which day in the month do I want to use? I could use first of, last of. There's probably other options for me. I could look at help if I wanted to. I'm going to use the last day in the month as the basis for the index. And then I'm going to turn off OH, open, high, low, close because I am not dealing anymore with that uh, multi-dimensional open, high, low, close data. So I'm going to set false on that. And now I have monthly prices. If I take a look at that, notice I my column structure is the same, but I now have only 85 rows. And you can see each row is now the end of the month. So I've translated the periodicity. So that's a powerful function right there with lots of variations. But those are prices. So I am going to get uh, returns monthly that I'm going to, for this, I'm going to use the performance analytics package, return, calculate. Passing it prices monthly. And when calculating return, of course, we have different methods, arithmetic, but I'm going to use arithmetic, for example, but I'm going to use log returns, continuously compounded. And that's enough to translate my monthly prices into monthly returns. So if I take a look at that, I am getting, you can see here, these look much more like returns than prices, same column structure, and actually the same row structure. My first row is NA, why is that? Well, by definition, my first row doesn't have a prior price base from which to compute the returns. So again, what uh, Jonathan Regenstein does here is just add NA omit, makes a lot of sense. And this 
um, will eliminate any incomplete cases of the data. That is to say where there are NAs on any of the columns. It's only my first row here that's an incomplete case. So that if I run returns monthly, I've really just eliminated that NA row and I have really uh, clean data throughout. And that's really the whole point of it. I still have an XTS object, right? If I wanted to just take it the uh, structure of returns monthly, it's an XTS object. So if I also want to just get returns, I'm going to just, uh, as matrix, take returns monthly, because I'm going to use that for my correlation matrix. But real quick, just for example, I can ggplot my returns monthly. There's my data. I need an aesthetic, and I'm only going to use the histogram, and maybe let's say Bank of America. And so that's ggplot. First layer is data. Second layer is aesthetic. Third and, and final essential layer is my geome. And I'm keeping it real simple with a histogram. So that if I run that, come down here, I get a histogram for the returns for Bank of America. You can see here spanning negative 20%. Um, got a little uh, outlier here above 20%, but these are monthly uh, returns per the histogram. And then finally, well, almost finally, if I do correlation of that matrix returns, the core function, notice down here, I get a correlation matrix. It's betrayed by the fact that there's one in the diagonal. Correlation of a, of a quantity with itself is always one. And we can see, for example, Skyworks and Apple have a correlation of 0.54. And I did load just because I think it's sort of I think it's cool the core plot, which just visualizes the correlation matrix and gives me different methods, gives us different methods in order to, ways to visualize it, for example, with the number, core plot. So it takes that same correlation matrix, and you can see here, visualize it, and it's got some other, so we can sort of instantly see that Skyworks and Apple sticks out. Um, take that down a little bit as a correlation in the matrix. So uh, that's all I wanted to show in my approach, how, um, Sort, sort of easy it is to pull that in, but more than easy, it's super powerful because I've just, just one basic set of operations with all that data. And then just finally, what I did there, what I did here, my, my essential function, I would say, is right here, right? Where I'm a, 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 a mapping get symbols, that's that essential uh get symbols function, or in my case, the wrapper, get my symbols against the vector of my tickers, and then piping that to the map, the AD function. So I just pull out the adjusted prices from the OL, OHLC data, and then reducing it back. So I consolidate that list into a single XTS object. So that's the essential, um, routine right here of piping that I think does all of the work, gets me back a single XTS object. And it's inspired here by um, the, the approach in his book, where it's just a get symbols call, pipes that here to this function. This is the one that gave me trouble that, candidly, I did not understand for, I would, an, an hour or so till I sort of broke it down. So, I, I ended up using my approach because it's more intuitive to me, but you can see here, it's still a map using the add function, and then he pipes that to the reduce merge. So essentially similar here to retrieving the prices. So I hope that's helpful. If the video is helpful, subscribe to the channel because I've definitely a lot more coming on R because I've been spending a lot of time learning it. Thank you.